for for many i'm not going to say all i don't because i don't even remember how this was in my my experience but you know when you go through puberty you have some sort of consolation right there again not for everyone but mm-hmm you've probably at least caught it at school that this is normal. It's okay. Your body's changing. It's okay. Right. And if you had, you know, parents that were kind of compassionate, you might've heard it at home too. Like, Oh, it's okay. Oh, this is just part of growing up, you know, all those things, but you don't get that at 50, (laughs) right? Like your your husband's not like, Oh, it's okay, dear. This is just part of, part of growing up, you know, like you that, you don't hear that anywhere. And I think that there is a movement in our culture to kind of stop this ageism and, you know, and, and embrace it more. And let's start talking about things like menopause and perimenopause more, but, but the comfort you're talking about that would come naturally at others in other seasonal changes. Oh, when you're pregnant, right? Oh, it's okay to gain weight. Yeah. But your body's going to change. It's normal. Don't worry about it. You don't get that in perimenopause, do you? No, we're told to fix it, right. make it better, look younger. Here's all the ways you can do it and the thousands of dollars you can spend to get it. Ooh, that's just a little sample of what is ahead in today's show. I'm talking with Ruth Harper again. If you missed part one of this series, go listen to my first interview with her last time. Ruth is a dietitian. She's a food a coach and an intuitive eating coach. And we are doing a coaching session. I am going to be coached around aging and you get to listen in. So I'm glad you're here. Hey, offering coaching for you, coaching around body image issues. And really, it's more like discipleship. If you don't know about my coaching program, I'm not going to tell you how to eat, although I know that's what most of you want to know. Um, but that's a unicorn. And we'll talk about that in a future show or read my book compared to and you can find out more what I mean about that. But what we're going to work on is your heart. We're going to work on why you're stuck, why you've tried all the things and you're still stuck stressing over your body. You're still stuck looking at the scale and being frustrated every single day. Wherever you are stuck, I want to help. And that's why I'm doing a super low price this summer. I've never had coaching this low in recent years. So this is just a one-time thing. I'm in an awkward season between getting ready to launch my course in the fall and launch my new book, the 40-Day Body Image book, um, next December. So hey, take advantage of this time. Just grab a couple sessions. You can do up to five sessions on the special price. So book a couple sessions. You're going to want to grab the spots now because there are limit, literally, I don't know, I think maybe there's 20 spots available for those six weeks. So grab your spots and I would love the opportunity to work with you. Hey, before we get into today's show, I need to tell you that We are so excited to have Classical Conversations be the sponsor uh, this season on the Compared to Who show. Let me tell you a little bit about Classical Conversations. Classical Conversations is a homeschool program that equips parents with a proven curriculum and support from a local community of homeschool families all walking the same path together. My family has been using Classical Conversations for more than 10 years. I highly recommend the program. I could have never homeschooled without Classical Conversations. But Classical Conversations wants you to know you're their first teacher, so be their best teacher. You can learn how to make homeschooling doable at classicalconversations.com slash compared to who. That's classicalconversations.com slash compared to who. Go check it out today. Welcome to Compared to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compared to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Well, I thought it would be fun. Fun might not be the right word, Ruth. <laughs> I thought it would be helpful. Let's let's go with that. For me to kind of throw out to you 
some common laments, common uh, scenarios, if you will, common complaints around aging. Mm -hmm. And for us just to kind of pretend we're doing a little coaching session. And my hope is to kind of try to capture maybe what some of our listeners are, are feeling (laughs) and, and for you to be able to, through encouraging me or coaching me, kind of coach them virtually. So it's kind of like a free coaching session on aging today. <laughs> so, Love it. Let's are you it. ready? You game? Yeah. Okay. So I, I think thing one needs to be help. I don't recognize this body in the mirror anymore. Yeah. What do I do after decades. Okay. Maybe for some, it's just years for me. If I was asking you this question personally, it would be decades of controlling everything seem like my power seems to have disappeared overnight where there were seasons where I could just, Oh, I'll do a little tweak here, a little tweak there, you know, eat a little less of this food, exercise a little more. And my body will, will go back to closer to what I want it to be. All the power is gone. My body's just doing whatever it wants to do now. How do I cope with that? Well, could you talk a little bit more about what it means to not recognize your body when you look in the mirror? Like, what does that feel like for you? I'm trying to think of the right word to put with it, right? Because it's a it, it it's a little bit. <laughs> so I would cash it out as, and this is you know if I've. I've done a little work around this, but I would cash it out as a dissonance between what I want to see and what I see. And then as I think more about it, I'm like, yeah, that dissonance has probably always been there, right? I mean, it's the same body dysmorphic disorder that has been there for decades. But it feels different with aging for some reason. It it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's a different thing than just size or shape. It's, it's maybe a stark reality of there's, you know, this is a new season. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is like, there's, you're not seeing what you want to see and it speaks out of control. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is something I talk to a lot of clients about. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is that reality of it's so false. Right. But, but the perception I think through my twenties and thirties was that my body looked the way it looked because of what I did. Right. Mm -hmm. That it was up to me. And aging, I think comes in and adds an element of eh, not up to you anymore. Like we're going to do what we're going to do. This is just the way it works. So out of control there says failure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is I th- that it? Or can you, is I there th- a better word for it? No, I, th- I think that is the perfect word. I think a lot of women I talk to feel that way right? It's, it's success looks like, and, and it's so hard, right? You can't even tangibly say success looks like not aging. Cause you know, that's weird, right? <laughs> like, but like, you know, it's at some level intellectually, we know that in our forties and fifties, we're not going to look the same as we did in our twenties. We know that intellectually. And yet I think you're right. I think there's still that expectation that you should have been able to do something about it. And because you couldn't, it's failure. So yeah, I think failure is a great word. So then what does it mean if you're failing in that area? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think failing. So for me personally, failing connects to, to not being smart enough. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, it's like, Oh, or maybe back to what you said earlier about exactness, 
right. Connecting Mm -hmm. that failure is, oh, you weren't smart enough to beat it. You didn't do enough research. You didn't figure out the exact formula necessary, (laughs) like the exact right way to eat and the exact right way to exercise. So you wouldn't face the consequences, bum, bum, bum of aging. Right. I I think there's very much a, oh, are other people looking at me thinking, oh, it's a shame. She just wasn't smart enough to figure out how to beat it. Wow. So you bring the other people in. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Is there a sense inside that you're, there's fear of what the other people are thinking about your lack of smart enough? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Right. I think, I think for myself and probably most of the people I talk to, right. It's like 50% of it is what I think of me and 50% of it is what other people think of me, but that 50% isn't actually what other people think. It's what I fear they think, (laughs) right. Cause no one's actually said, Oh, Heather, (laughs) it's a shame. You haven't figured this out. Right. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, me putting words in their mouth and then trying to correct based on my fears of their opinions. Well, what if people are judging you? What does that mean? Hmm. That's a good question, Ruth. What does that mean? you know, scripturally, it really shouldn't mean anything to me, right? Because I shouldn't be afraid of the opinions of man. It it means they're comparing themselves to me, which I'm comparing myself to them. (laughs) So, you know, it's, I guess it's a, it's a quid pro quo there, but, but it, you know, it means in their comparison, they are either coming out ahead with pride or, you know, most people don't look for ways to come out the loser in those comparison Mm -hmm. contests. Although we, we do, but we're not looking, seeking those ways out normally, but yeah. Yeah. So it's like, who's winning? Yeah. No one wins in comparisons contest. Right. 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 But that's something that we have inside is this meter of who's winning in this little interaction that may or may not be happening. Yeah. 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 Wrote a whole book on that. Yeah. So, okay. So if there's this sense that if you're not smart enough to make your body look younger or younger, meaning all kinds of things, right? Skin, body size, hair, everything, um, they might be judging you. What do you want around that? Mm. Yeah, that's, it's a good question because it puts, it puts you in the dilemma of what do I really want from my relationship with other people? Do I want them to be impressed by me Mm -hmm. or do I want to love them? Mm. Right. Do I want them to love me? And do I want to love them? And if I'm seeking relationships where I only want them to be impressed by me, that's not really very loving. Right. Um, yeah. Do I, do I want their uh, applause or do I want their genuine love? Yeah. There are layers of wants. I mean, maybe there's several narratives inside that say things. Do you notice anything more complex around that? Sometimes there's a, like a, a thought inside that says, actually, I want people to think I look amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I really want. And then there's another thought that says, no, I just, I just want people to love me for who I am. Mm -hmm. And another part might be like, you know, I just want to love people because I really do love them. And there might be another narrative that says, I just don't care about any of it. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I don't know. What do you think about that? I feel like as a Christian, right? Like some of those some of those options are fleshly desires. Totally. Right. Uh And so the right answer is, you know, I want to love them (laughs) and sure would be nice if they loved me in return, but ultimately not much I can do about that. 
you know, I don't think the right answer is apathy, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> screw y'all. I don't care what you think. Right. I feel like that's, and that I don't actually think that that's genuine either. I think most of the time when we do that, that's a defense mechanism, right? Like, I don't care what you say about me. I'm going to, it's like, it's a rebellion of sorts, not actually freedom. <laughs> it's, it's yicky to admit that we would want, as I would frame it, we'd want glory for ourselves, right? Like, I want you to be impressed by me. I want some glory <laughs> for me. It's like, oh, no, that's probably not what God wants. <laughs> but you no. Know, and I think there's something beautiful about being just that honest that there's mm-hmm there's different parts of us inside that maybe aren't lined up with the Holy Spirit. We have that Holy Spirit filled um, part of us that we want to be leading our ourselves because that I really want to be a hundred percent led by the spirit and, and full of true authentic love for others and not be seeking for self. And there's a sad 12 year old inside of me that says, no, Oh, I need it for me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, that's really common and mm-hmm. understandable. Yeah. So what about though, in aging, I think in aging, there is this added shame mm-hmm. that is different than body image issues in your teens, twenties, thirties, right? I think the added shame comes from like, oh, I thought I would have sorted this out by now, right? Like this, this other layer of, oh goodness, (laughs) I've been dealing with this so long now. And now, you know, I, I never reached that point. I, I don't know. That's, that's just another thing that I, I hear commonly. What, how do you, how do you help, how do you help that added layer of, of shame? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so, okay. So if, if I were working with somebody feeling that shame, I would really want to help them connect with what their body is experiencing in that shame because emotions are held in, in the body. And shame can feel a lot of different ways. A lot of times people will describe it as a heaviness and it might be in a certain place that can be identified. And it's, it's really beautiful if we can find what the body is feeling and use the body as a resource to connect with the feeling Mm. and then go towards that sensation with attention and compassion and inviting the Holy Spirit to come and attend to this sensation that the body is carrying. And so it's not, oh, I feel shame. I need to do something about it. It's can go towards it with compassion and care in the Lord Mm -hmm. to then minister to what you're experiencing. Yeah. And sometimes the shame or whatever the feeling is will have something to say, like what's going on. Like if you go towards it mm. and it can tell you what it's shameful of. And then there's, I mean, a treasure of information on how to pray around what your body is experiencing. And it's beautiful. And It brings us closer to the Lord Mm. because we're taking what we're experiencing. And we think it's about my body isn't looking like I want it to. And the shame is coming. And it's, it's almost always a lot more than that. There's something behind it that the body's carrying for us. And then we can take it to the Lord and have his love attend and comfort us just like Jesus does. He goes towards people who are hurting Mm. towards the pain instead of stop feeling that that's not godly. Right. 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 Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. And then the body can be like, Oh, maybe I can be here Mm. in this size or shape or age that I am because Jesus is with me. Yeah. 
in what I'm experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. What, what about how the hormone changes mess with our reality? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so personally back to me, like, well, it may not even be wrestling, uh, messing with my reality. I think it's actually, this is really happening. Like I've noticed at this age, like my body, I'm, I'm, I'm in perimenopause, but still cycling. And like, I, my legs will get twice as big (laughs) when when less couple days before my period, like there is more like dramatic physical changes that I'm seeing than ever before with the hormone shifts. And like you, you mentioned the hot flashes and, and just, you know, for me, like I've always kind of now, now knowing what I do, I'm like wondering if the hot flashes I had in my twenties were actually just because I was underfed, but that's a whole other episode. <laughs> but, but like, that's always been kind of part of my reality was getting hot and, you know, but now I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a whole new level of, of getting hot. And then the, you know, the added complication of, okay, I'm trying to get ready. You know, I'm hot and my body doesn't look like it did last week. And, you know, how do we, how do we think about the hormone shifts or how do we, how, how can we, I don't know reckon with them, reason with them, process them? I don't know. That's probably a big question, Ruth, but but what are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, so it's, it's again, a much, a little bit the same of what we just talked about is just to go towards, like say your legs, that they're, Mm. they're holding a lot for you in the changes that your body's going through and it's physical and it's uncomfortable. And just to go towards your legs with care and compassion Mm. and just almost have a conversation with your legs like legs what do you need (laughs) you're really that's a lot huh (laughs) um and if you can bring that compassionate part of you towards your legs even if you're angry at them Uh for being the size that they are in those moments and you're not sure how to dress them or or whatever to say, Hey legs, you know, what do you need right Mm -hmm. now for me? And even often even offer touch to them say, I'm I'm here. I get it. You're not doing this one to hurt me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm here with you and, and just consider what, what can you do to offer your body care and kindness when you're experiencing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you that, think you would do? Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like personally, for so I'm a thinker, right? That's my default on all the tests. That's how I'll come out. And so for me, it is more of a, it's okay. Like talking my to myself, it's it's okay. That's just this is normal. Like this is my new normal. Like nothing strange is happening to me. I haven't done anything wrong. This is not the result of some like minuscule choice I made. It's not the result of what I ate for dinner last night. Like this is, this is just a part of getting older and this change I'm going through. Um, And so that that's been helpful for me, but I love the broader point of kindness because I feel like that's, that was a bigger obstacle for me like really even just within the last couple of years, making the shift from, oh, it's better to be on the same team as my body and be nice to it. And then to keep trying to beat it into submission. And I know there's probably lots of women listening today that are battling aging and maybe still stuck in that beating it into submission. Um, you know, I mean, that's what we're taught to do. Right. In fact, I mean, even it's yicky, but like, that's even what we're taught in church, right. You know, put the, put the flesh in submission, which is not what that means at all. Right. But that's, that's how it's been distorted and it's, it's us versus our bodies disregarding the whole self. And so, yeah. And, and, you know, I don't know, I could go on about that for a while and I I know you're nodding your head (laughs) in agreement here. What, what thoughts come up for you? 
Yeah. So, so when, when women are feeling this, I want to fight my body, like it's changing and I don't like it. And I feel all of this, I need to do something. So there, there's that feeling, your body's feeling something. And it brings up this story inside that said, I have to do something about it. And we're taught by the culture what to do, right? We're to restrict our food, exercise more, um, figure something out, take a kajillion supplements or whatever it is to do to try to fix the problem when maybe what is more effective to help you get through it is to acknowledge what it feels like and name it and how you're feeling it in your body and then go towards it with the compassion of Christ and offer yourself just if you need to grieve over it, bring the Lord in and, and cry through it. And I let him hold you. And I, I like to do like a self hug and a rocking type of thing. Like just picture the Lord with you and holding you and rocking you and um, just offering yourself this, this touch and this connection to say, my body is holdable and mm. comfortable um, not comfortable, but comfortable. If that makes sense. <laughs> able, able to be comforted. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm making up words. Oh, um, um, yeah, but th there's just this practice of going towards the negative feeling and the, and the sensation that feels so big that it leads us to want to take action to fix. Yeah. Then we have power in the Lord to find what we actually want, which is to be comforted and yeah. to have resolution of the emotion that's coming from the change and the things that we're experiencing in our bodies. Yeah. You know, as I think about that concept, it's like, it's interesting for, for many, I'm not going to say all, I don't, because I don't even remember how this was in my, my experience, but you know, when you go through puberty, you have some sort of consolation, right there again, not for everyone, but mm -hmm. you've probably at least caught it at school that this is normal. It's okay. Your body's changing. It's okay. Right. And if you had, you know, parents that were kind of compassionate, you might've heard it at home too. Like, oh, it's okay. Oh, this is just part of growing up, you know, all those things, but you don't get that at 50, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> your husband's not like, oh, it's okay, dear. This is just part of part of growing up. You know, like you, that you don't hear that anywhere. And I think that there is a movement in our culture to kind of stop this ageism and you know and and embrace it more. And let's start talking about things like menopause and perimenopause more. But but the comfort you're talking about that would come naturally at others in other seasonal changes. Oh, when you're pregnant, right? Oh, it's okay to gain weight. Yeah. That your body's going to change. It's normal. Don't worry about it. You don't get that in perimenopause, do you? No, we're told to fix it, right. make it better. Look younger. Here's all the ways you can do it and the thousands of dollars you can spend to get it. Um, and it's, it's false. We are going to age and we are going to look older um, and if we do all the things to try to fix it, there is an expense in dollars, of course, and in just emotional effort, and then it's going to fail in the end. I mean, we can try and try and maybe get a sense of what the culture might say success for some people, maybe, and then a lot of people, maybe not, but it is temporary at right. best yeah. and it costs a lot. Like if people, if we restrict our diets, we are doing it at the expense of our bone health, of our muscle health and our ability to age well and have a longer life that we're able to move and be and, and have even more positive health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Restricting does not help us in the long run. It is, it is a vain um, effort in all yeah. the ways. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and even, you know, even that little bit of little bit or a lot, I shouldn't say little bit, but the extra is probably the word I'm looking for. Even the extra that we tend to carry in the middle 
for people that never care. I never carried in the middle before, you know, if I was going to gain weight, it was all <laughs> waist and below, hey, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, um, maybe my chest would get a little bigger, but, <laughs> but for the most part, it was, it was hips, but thighs, but then now in this season, it's, it's stomach, but I've heard there's even a protective element to that. Like that's, and then, and then just looking around, right. You can see, oh, that's normal, right? Most women I know <laughs> that are in my age range. I mean, it's, it varies, right? But that's just kind of a new reality. That's just the way you start to look. So putting it together is like ding, ding, ding. Oh, maybe there's something to this. Maybe that's just the way we age, right? I mean, <laughs> go ahead. Well, yeah, I want to speak to that because it's it's fascinating. This, there's There's not a lot of study like saying that, having um, more fat tissue around the middle is actually health protective. And there are, there are some associations that are, that have been made that women who have gained, um, I think it was 10 kilos or more in menopause who started out in smaller bodies um, had threefold cardiac protective effects from cardiac related um, mortality uh, as in, in age. And so with that, if I can say that a little more clearly, um, women who gained 10 kilos or more didn't die from heart events. There was a threefold protective um, mm. outcome. And also, if you think about this, this is Mr. Obvious, uh, like women live longer than men. Mm. Right. And so women do gain weight in the middle as we get older. That is a fact. And so can it be that bad? (laughs) Right. Longevity for women is a real thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we're threatened with it, right? Like, oh no, you have a little belly fat. Oh, you're going to have a heart attack. You got to get rid of that belly fat. You can have a heart attack. That's, I mean, that's what's in my Instagram feed. (laughs) <laughs> right. But it's crazy when you think about the clear, obvious understanding is that women do live longer than men and yeah. women do gain weight as we get older. So it doesn't add up. Yeah. When I had seen somewhere, it was actually, it was another show. Um, I think it was Christy Harrison's anti-diet show actually, but she had a, an expert on there in aging was talking about how, you know, estrogen I guess, stores in your fat cells, right? And how Mm -hmm. that's kind of your body's like, uh uh-oh, we're losing estrogen. (laughs) We got to keep them here. We got to keep them close. Um, And that made sense to me. And she was talking about how, you know, we, we use the term, uh, I'm going to butcher her beautiful illustration. So apologies, but it was like, we use the term spare tire, but she's like, what if it's your life uh, your lifeboat preserver, life yeah, preserver. Uh-huh. That's it. That's a better yeah, way. Yeah. 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 It's like, Oh yeah. You know, like what, what if this is actually serving a purpose biologically, like God knew what he was doing. It's not a like whoopsie random thing <laughs> that are, are, you know, we're all experiencing this. Hmm, maybe there's a purpose to it. Yeah. I, I am certain that there is sadly the research questions haven't been asked directly around that. And I have yeah. searched the literature over and there's nothing that I can say that has been studied directly, directly, but there is that association yeah. with weight gain and menopause and cardioprotective health and longevity of women. Yeah. So I think it's fascinating and it's really just getting through the pain that the culture gives mm-hmm. us around looking older um, and sitting with the pain. And that's why I do help women to connect with what their bodies are feeling emotionally. And of course the hunger and fullness and satiety cues, um, because their body is just such an amazing resource to help us understand what we're going through. And then we can seek the Lord for what feels like it's too much. And it's just beautiful. The healing that he gives when we go near to him and acknowledge that he's here with us and um, that we can get through a lot of things and have the, the beauty of the, and like, I am uncomfortable in a body that's not tiny anymore and I'm okay. I can be in the world and I can be me and God loves me and I can live and have a, a life that's beautiful and that's okay. Yeah. 
I love that, Ruth. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today and helping us hash through some of these aging related issues. Would you tell everyone where they can connect with you? And, and do you see virtual clients, Ruth? Is that something you do in your practice? I do see virtual clients. Yes. And you can find me at nourish mentor at, um, and nourishmentor.com. Um, my email is Ruth at nourishmentor.com. Yeah. Awesome. And I'll put the link in the show notes. Well, thanks again for being on the show today. And thank you for watching or listening today. I hope something today has helped you stop comparing and start living. 